ओके लेट्स बिगिन सो द फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व टूडे इज दिस इफ यू आर गिवन अ स्ट्रिक्ट पार्शियल ऑर्डर विच मीन्स लेस दैन या इज अ सबसेट ऑफ लेस दैन इज अ सबसेट ऑफ वॉट ए क्रॉस ए इज वॉट इ रिफ्लेक्सिव एंड ट्रांसिटिव ओके and transitive then you need to show that you simply take the union of this relation with the diagonal relation then you get a weak partial order which is reflexive transitive and antisymmetric okay so uh, why is so let me say lambda uh, yeah i mean let this be lambda union delta a we need to show that lambda double dash is uh, sorry less than or equal to i am saying lambda less than or equal to dash is reflexive why is it reflexive yes because it is reflexive if and only if con it contains the diagonal hmm since the diagonal is contained inside this yes uh, why is it sim uh, transitive what do you need to check for transitivity if a is less equal b and b is less equal c then a is less equal c so now how many cases are there four cases yes so if a is less equal b and b is less than c then what will happen oh i mean uh, sorry maybe i should make those four cases very precise so four cases first one is that a is less than b and b is less than c then we are done yes why by transitivity of less than okay so this implies a less than c since less than is transitive <coughs> then uh, this is the first case then the second case is that a is less than b but b is equal to c then why is a less less than equal to c c is less than c because a is less than c therefore a is less than or equal to c yeah yeah there is nothing here i mean this question is purely uh, formal verification okay what is the third case this is dual a is equal to b and b is less than c are you all getting why i am writing just two symbols see this this equal to sign is when b and c are less equal but they are less equal with respect to only delta a delta a means just the pair b comma b that is in relation right so there are four possibilities either a is a is less equal b means either a is less than b or a delta ab but delta ab is a is equal to b because there is nothing else possible question sir uh, like i am not able to understand what is the what does it mean by the okay. union uh, see union means so less than is a subset of a cross a delta a is a subset of a cross a so you take the union so uh, see what what it means so a is less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to prime yeah prime b if and only if either a is less than b or a delta ab ie a is equal to b 
So that's if and only if once you know that then the rest of the verification is quite simple. Well, uh, this one is also done. Yeah, similarly, it's simply the dual of second case. And what is the last case? A is equal to B and B is equal to C. Then obviously A is equal to C and therefore A is less equal prime C. Okay, what is the last property that we need to verify? Anti is anti-symmetric. So what should we assume? So suppose A is less than or equal to B, I mean less than or equal to prime B and B is less than or equal to prime A. Now once you assume that A is less than or equal to prime B, what happens if A is strictly less than B? If A is strictly less than B? So B less than or equal to prime A will not happen. Strictly less than means they are distinct, right? And uh, why is the other relation also anti-symmetric? I mean, it, it's not really anti-symmetric. See, let me write uh, it in red again. So, if A is less than B and B is less than A, then by transitivity, what will happen? Yes, then by transitivity, A is less than A, which is a contradiction to? Yes. So, therefore, this cannot happen. Okay. So, therefore, if A is less than equal to prime B, then what is the possibility? So, for both of these, we have two different possibilities, right? Either A is less than B or A is equal to B. B is less than A or B is equal to A. You should verify that only in this condition it is possible. Apart from that, the rest of the three possibilities will lead to a contradiction. Question? You understood this? Yes or no? No. So, what are the possibilities? You tell me which case I should do. Yes? Why? For which it is not true. Yes, that A less than uh, equal to B and B less than equal to A. Uh -huh. We have to take only one case like A less than B and B less than A or A less than B and B equal to A. We don't have to prove for every case. Why? Why don't we have to prove it for every case? So, because it is defined in that way that every pair A, B, B, A should also exist in that relation. Yes, B, A should exist. So, that's what the contradiction is. If we assume that A is less than B, then B less equal prime A cannot happen. Correct? Okay. So, therefore, uh, uh, maybe I mean I am just putting this in brackets. I will continue writing the proof below. So, if A is less than B, then we just saw yeah, in red, then B is not less than A, correct? And by irreflexivity, uh, A is not equal to B also. Yes? So, this is the argument in red. Okay. So, therefore, if A is less than B, then B is not less equal prime A. doesn't happen. Okay, so, the only possibility is that A is equal to B. 
therefore a is equal to b and hence uh, symmetry is anti symmetry is proven is that what you are referring to say something Yeah, I am not understanding why. Like we are disproving the symmetry. So we, are we are not disproving symmetry. We are proving anti-symmetry. Oh, maybe there is a confusion. What is anti-symmetry? Please tell me. What is uh, anti-symmetric relation? <coughs> anti-symmetry of R subset of A cross A. Have we written it down at any point? No? Okay. It just says that if A R B and B R A, then A equal to B. This is the definition of anti-symmetry. Yeah, we are not saying it is not symmetric. <laughs> okay. So, this is the definition of anti-symmetry. I am sorry about that. Yeah, I should have mentioned. Okay, so the only possible so we obtain a contradiction if a is less than b, then b is not less equal prime a. So in if a is equal to b, then only one of those two possibilities holds. Yeah, b less than a cannot happen, so it must be b equal to a, and we are done. Yeah, because that's what we needed to prove. Okay, converse is similar, converse it says that if A less equal is a weak partial order, then you remove the diagonal from it and then we will get a strict partial order and hence uh, anti-symmetry is proven and hence in the other uh, sense the only choice is hence if And we are done. Yeah, I mean, anti symmetry is done. So, conversely, if, if you simply remove the diagonal, the pairs of the type A, comma A from a weak partial order, then you will get a strict partial order. And what is the purpose of this particular exercise that we can talk about partial orders? Strict and weak, it does not really matter. Yeah, they are interchangeable. You simply add the diagonal or you remove the diagonal, then you switch between two things. Something similar happens for a linear order as well. Any questions? Okay. Fine. Uh, so, let us say uh, we are talking about this star. So, star is the dual linear order. So, when we consider omega, these are all non-negative natural numbers. What will be omega star? It is the reverse order, right? So, we will say that 0 is bigger, th bigger than 1, 1 is bigger than 2, 2 is bigger than 3. So, up to order isomorphism, what we are getting is all non-positive numbers. Understood? If, okay, see, if L less than is a linear order, then uh, define L less than star, yeah, to be basically just this, right? So, uh, like if you impose this, so A less than star B, if and only if A is bigger than B, 
that simple you simply reverse whatever was the smallest you make it largest whatever is smaller you make it bigger yeah you invert that's why it's called dual okay so what is the uh, question here show that there is no injective monotone map <coughs> so suppose g from omega star to w is an injective monotone map what is the meaning of monotone preserves order. order so what is the order here therefore if n is less than m then what should happen with gn and gm see if n is less than m less than is belongs to but it is taken in okay um, should i write the appropriate notation uh, see should i say this n belongs to star m which is what then n contains m correct okay yeah i mean this is in brackets then by monotonicity what will happen gn is very good so i mean ultimately what is the result n contains m but gn is bigger so let me uh, draw some picture okay so this is my omega uh, star yeah in this direction we are like if i write something above then what do i get it is a bigger element okay and w is a well order so it must have a least element then second least element third least element and dot 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 so this is my w so now what is g doing well g is mapping this to a particular element this to a particular element this to a particular element so in in uh, in particular what am i getting a decreasing infinite chain right so this is my w and this is my omega so i already mentioned in the class that there cannot exist an infinite decreasing chain in a well ordered set so that's what we are trying to prove how do we write an infinite decreasing chain it is the image of a map from omega star to w okay so if n star so then, then then this happens now where is the contradiction so we have assumed that there exists a, an injective monotone map so we have to obtain a contradiction to well ordered property somehow what's the idea which set which non empty subset of w should i consider image of the yes yes consider image of g subset of w then clearly image of g is non empty so by well ordered property by well ordering of w image of g must contain a least element say x not so x not is in image of g 
So, should it be an, uh, in the image of some particular element, then x0 is equal to, say x0 is equal to g of some n0. Okay, but then what is the problem? Is this really the least element in image of G? But G of N naught is bigger than G of N naught plus 1, which is a contradiction. to x0 equal to gn0 being the least element. Least element in image of g, yeah. And this contradiction simply proves, yeah, any, any doubts about this? Once you understand which non-empty subset to choose, then everything is pretty straightforward. Yeah, the image, images like g of 0 was the largest element in the image, then g of 1, then g of 2 and it is an infinite decreasing chain. So, it cannot have a least element because if you say something is least, then there is something lower than that. If you say this is least, then there is something lower than that. So, the process does not end. So, that is why well, ordering, uh, well ordered sets cannot have an infinite decreasing chain. In particular, every decreasing chain in any large ordinal, yeah, however large ordinal, it must be over after finitely many steps. Right? So, this is a very simple proof of that fact. Shall we go ahead? Okay. Let us see. Can you do this omega plus 1 dot 3? Yes? You want to do it, Sri Ram? No, it is written here. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, then let us do the second one. Yeah? 2 dot 5 plus omega. Anybody who has done this? You want to do it? This is not a proper way of doing things. What is the definition of phi plus omega? Well, no, we did 1 plus omega in class is equal to omega. So omega. That is okay, but you still have to use the definition. If you are evaluating okay. phi plus omega, then you should use? Yeah, the limit ordinal. Uh -huh. So, what is phi plus omega? It is union of phi plus delta n. Uh -huh. yeah, fine. fine. And then what is that union? This is the same as union n. Yes, and correct. That's the definition of omega. And that is the definition of omega. Yeah. Okay. And then similarly now you have two dot omega. Yeah. So two dot omega is uh, two into n. Two into n, sir. Correct. And again, this is union of n. And then therefore, this is equal to omega. Now, I want you to explain why these two steps are similar. Yeah. Why is phi plus n, the union of phi plus n same as union of n? Yeah, so n is clearly contained in phi plus n and phi plus n will be contained in like, uh, like n plus phi here. So, you will be taking… Contained in what sense? Like a as a subset? As a subset. So, like for some n then like you will be counting that phi plus n already. Are you getting? No. 
explain it better. Okay, so like, uh, yeah, so uh, suppose you have like you're taking five plus like four specifically uh -huh. in the first one, in this one, and in the second one, like eventually you will like you will count nine, right? In, like you will be taking the union of nine, so you will already be counting this. Okay. See, one side is obvious. Because the set here, set written here, that is already contained in here. So, this union is contained inside this union. That is clear. What about the other thing? No, the other thing Why is n contained inside 5 plus n? Because n is smaller than 5 plus n. Right. So, n is a subset of 5 plus n and therefore it happens. Similar argument works at the bottom. Mm. Yeah. If you talk about any particular n, then if n is even, then it is contained inside the set of even numbers whose union we are taking. If n is odd, then it is included in the in n plus 1, which is even. Right? So, therefore, both the, the things are equal. Any questions? Fine. Thank you. Anybody wants to do omega dot omega plus 1 on the screen? You have done that? Everybody is looking back, yeah? they do not want to take responsibility. Okay, fine. I will add another page and I will just sh show you. So, wha what is omega dot omega plus 1? Omega yes, this is omega dot omega plus which is omega into omega, plus omega, into omega plus omega by definition. Mm -hmm. Then this is equal to? Okay, nothing more to write. Then what was, uh, there was next one, yeah? Omega plus 1 dot omega, what will it be? That is proven there. Okay, Nupur, I think it is time for you to speak. <laughs> so, I am doing the question after this. I forget what question number it is, but we have to show that omega plus 1 raised to omega is equal to omega raised to omega. Now, uh, I have split it into three lemmas and it is not clear where these three lemmas are coming from, but if you start proving this inductively, then you will find that you need each of these steps. So, I have worked backwards. Um, right, so, the first lemma, uh, in the first lemma, we are proving that omega plus 1 dot n equals omega dot n plus 1. I hope that has not been shown yet. Um, so, we do this by induction. Omega plus 1 dot 0 is 0 by definition of multiplication. That is the base case of the recursive definition. Um, then um, I have also done omega plus 1 dot 1 because I think we need it in the next step. Um, right. So then you use again the recursive definition. I'm sorry, this is too small for the people at the back. Uh, but yeah, it's omega plus 1 dot 0 plus omega plus 1. This is 0, which you already know. 0 plus something is the same thing by definition of addition, so we have this. Now, again, you have your inductive hypothesis, suppose this is true for some n. Oh, by the way, that is not definition, that is something they have to prove, 0 plus something is that. Oh, it is the 0 on the right side and the definition. Yes. Oh, I am sorry, <laughs> uh, we have to prove that. Um, fine. So, we have to calculate omega plus 1 dot n plus 1. Uh, by definition, this is the successor of n, so we can split it. Uh, this we have already shown is omega dot n and then, um, sorry, omega dot n plus 1 plus omega plus 1 and then we use associativity of addition to put the brackets here and this is 1 plus omega just like I think 5 plus omega was shown there uh, to be omega. Similarly, we know that 1 plus omega is the same as omega. Um, so, that step is needed. And then, by you use the definition of addition in the other way to factor this to omega dot n plus one plus one. Any questions up till here? Okay. Um, the next lemma we show a similar thing but for exponentiation. Or actually no, it's not similar. Uh, 
omega plus 1 raised to n dot omega is omega raised to n plus 1. Um, okay, again, you start with the base case. If you take your n to be 0, then you get the same thing back because by definition this is 1. Um, now you suppose this statement is true for some n. Uh, you want to show that this is true for n, for n plus 1. So you split this part because multiplication is associated. You can do that. Um, right. So you split this into two parts. And now we have to show, uh, we want to work with this. So we show that omega plus 1 dot omega is actually equal to omega squared. Uh, is this visible under the light? Or is it? Yeah. I'll just repeat, uh, my claim is omega plus 1 dot omega equals omega squared. That's the claim at the top here. Um, so again, uh, use the definition of this. Since this is a limit ordinal, we have to take the union. Uh, how, this omega plus 1 dot n, however, we have shown was equal to omega dot n plus 1 in the previous lemma. So we use that here. Uh, now we want to show that this is equal to omega squared. Um, so you show that omega, this is less than equal to omega squared, and omega squared is less than equal to this. So for all n that is less than omega, omega dot n plus 1 is less than equal to omega squared. I think this was covered in class, the normal form. I think everybody yeah, can understand this, yeah? Why omega dot n plus 1 is less equal to omega squared. I'll prove a similar statement at the end. So if you are confused here, you can look at that and try to prove this. Um, so this you can show, or maybe it's clear to you. On the other hand, if you have an ordinal in this set, uh, then that is of the form omega dot n plus m. This has been done in class. This is, yeah, division algorithm yeah. by omega. Okay. So use the division algorithm to write it like this. Um, now, you know that, now, OK. This is less than equal, so because m is less than equal to omega plus 1, you can write this. You have this inequality. Uh, those properties of addition still hold. I think that needs to be shown. Uh, <laughs> lots of things to show here that, uh, yeah. So this needs to be shown that uh, if you have an ordinal, um, if you have an ordinal alpha that is less than equal to beta, then alpha plus gamma is less than equal to no, no, gamma plus alpha is less equal uh, oh, yes. gamma plus gamma beta. Plus alpha is less than equal to gamma, gamma plus beta. So something of this form needs to be shown here. Uh, I have not shown it, otherwise I would have given it smaller. Um, okay. Right. Now you factor this again the other way, omega dot n plus omega. You can write that as omega dot n plus 1 by the definition of uh, multiplication. Um, this is less than equal to this. Again, needs to be shown. But I hope you can see that this, since this ordinal is smaller than, I mean, is larger than this ordinal, you have this inequality. Uh, with, and this lies in this set. This lies in omega plus 1 dot um, omega. And therefore, you have that whenever you have an ordinal that is smaller than omega squared, you know that that ordinal is also smaller than omega plus 1 dot omega. And so we have shown both inequalities and we have equality here. Or like, can you just simply say omega dot n plus 1 is, sub, is a subset of omega dot n plus 1, like whole in brackets, and omega dot n is obviously a subset Sorry, of... Sorry, uh, I lost you. What did you say, omega dot? n plus 1 is, a, no, yeah, like, yeah, just like yeah, outside the brackets. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one is, yeah, that's a subset of omega dot n plus 1. And so like the unions will be equal. Union of omega dot n plus 1 is equal to union of omega dot n. But these aren't the same orders. I don't think. You need, you need some work to show this, right? No, like, <laughs> not, there's no union outside. Like. Just the set of yeah, yeah. such numbers. OK, fine. Yeah. I guess that would be shorter. Yeah. Um, Fine, as long as there is at least one solution on the board, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we can continue what we wanted to show, which is like the same thing over here. Um, and we now know that this part.
part is omega squared, <coughs> which again we can split up by associating with your multiplication. Uh, that becomes omega dot omega. Now you can consider this part together by your induction hypothesis. This is omega raised to n plus one uh, dot omega, which is now omega raised to n plus one. By definition of exponentiation. Any questions? Okay. Now the next lemma shows something interesting. You're showing that uh, omega plus one raised to n is this summation, omega raised to n plus omega raised to n minus 1, dot 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 omega plus 1. Um, again, base case is clear by definition. Uh, suppose this is true for some n. You have to show this is true for n plus 1. So you again split this by definition of uh, exponentiation. This is omega plus 1 raised to n dot omega plus 1. Um, by definition of multiplication, you now get this omega plus one raised to n dot omega plus uh, omega plus one raised to n. Now by our second lemma, this part becomes omega raised to n plus one, and by our induction hypothesis, this second term uh, turns into the summation that we had, and this is exactly what we wanted. So we have shown this lemma. Any questions? Okay. Now uh, we start to prove the theorem, I mean whatever, the statement that you're given. Uh, you write your omega plus one raised to omega as the definition with the limit ordinal, it's the union of all omega plus one raised to n for n less than omega, which by your number <coughs> three is this summation. Uh, now that you have this summation, uh, right, and then you can write omega raised to omega as the union of um, omega raised to n. So now you want to show that these are equal, you show both inequalities. Um, how do you show this inequality? You take some element of this, which looks like omega raised to n plus omega raised to n minus 1 dot 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 on plus 1, which is in this set. You have to show that it also lies in this. Um, right. Now we know that omega raised to n minus 1 n plus 1 is an omega raised to omega and you can split this by definition of exponentiation uh, that is greater than or equal to omega raised to n dot n um, and like inductively you can show that you can just write this out n times uh, and then you again use that property that if you have something that is less than the other and then you add something on both sides the inequality stays the same, so then you just do this. Omega raised to n is greater than or equal to omega raised to n. Omega raised to n is greater than or equal to omega raised to n minus 1, and so on. So you get this inequality. I think you need omega to the n dot n plus 1, rather than... If you are just doing it term by term, you need it n plus 1 times. But even omega to the n equal to omega to the n, and then... Yeah, but there are n n plus one terms in the in that sum in the right hand oh, okay. side. I'm yeah. Sorry. Then just yeah. Two and then yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So this is n plus one terms. And what is O O T O H? On the other hand. On the other hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you get this inequality which shows you that omega is omega plus one raised to omega is less than equal to omega raised to omega. Now on the other hand, you can take an element from omega raised to omega, which looks like omega raised to n. Uh, now this is clearly less than equal to the same thing plus some terms added, which belongs to this step. And therefore, uh, you get the other inequality. And therefore, you have the equality. Um, any questions? I think the answer of n plus 2 that it should be omega pi n into n plus 1. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, something over here you have to change, <laughs> so that you get n plus 1 terms here. Um, yeah, sorry about that confusion, um, but yeah, more is having that. Any, any confusion?
Is it a mute presentation or you want to explain something? Okay. So, so the base case can be using the, the definition of addition with zero on the right hand side because we have both zeros here so we don't really worry about anything. And this is the induction hypothesis that for all beta less than alpha you have zero plus beta equals to beta. And because we are doing transfinite induction we need to use the strong variant. So if alpha could either be zero or a successor ordinal or a limit ordinal, right? So um, we have already handled zero. We are handling the successor ordinal now because if alpha is a successor ordinal, it is a successor of something. So I can just write this as alpha as gamma plus here and this is the definition of addition. And zero plus gamma is gamma by induction hypothesis and gamma plus is just alpha. So you get that back. And in the case that alpha is a limit ordinal, so you get 0 plus alpha is equal to the union of 0 plus gamma for all gamma less than alpha, which is 0 plus gamma is gamma for all gamma less than alpha by induction hypothesis. So this is the union of gamma for all gamma less than alpha. But this is precisely alpha because alpha was a limit ordinal in the first place. So that takes care of everything. Thank you. Just make sure if you write something like that, then write reasons for individual steps. Yeah? Induction hypothesis, something to that effect. We won't do the remaining two problems. They are very similar. Right? Okay. Let's come back to this. So, assuming well-ordering theorem show that if f is injective, then cardinality of A is less equal cardinality of B. Any ideas? Yeah. By contradiction. Yeah. By contradiction. Okay. How? Hey, suppose that cardinality of B was greater than cardinality of A. Uh -huh. no, sorry, suppose like cardinality of A is bigger than cardinality of B. Then the their respective ordinals, like uh -huh. which we used to define cardinality, uh -huh. the ordinal for A contains the ordinal for B. And like there is an injection back from B to A. Yeah, so they have to be equal by CSB. By CSB, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I will just take one step back and I will say that if uh, X is equinumerous with Y, then verify that s of x is equal to s of y. What was s of x? The set of all ordinals such that alpha belongs to is isomorphic to x less than for some well ordering less than on x. Yes, this was the definition. So, you, you can replace x with y because if x less than is a well ordering, then using a bijection between x and y, you can transfer that well ordering to y. And whenever you have a well ordering on y, you can pull it back through the same bijection to obtain a well ordering on x. So therefore, the set of well orderings on x and y are in bijection with each other. So therefore, Sx and Sy are equal and therefore, cardinality of x is equal to, I have not given you the complete proof, but this is the idea, show that Sx is equal to Sy. And cardinality is precisely the least element of Sx and least element of Sy, so they are equal. Now, uh, one way is of course to use contradiction and use trichotomy, trichotomy of cardinal numbers. Another way is that uh, since f from a to b is injective, so uh, we can conclude that a is in bijection with f of a, which is image. Yeah, and then what happens? Yeah, uh, now B is equal to f of A 
disjoint union b minus f of a. Therefore, what will be the cardinalities on both sides? Cardinality of b is equal to cardinality of f a plus cardinality of f a. Now, this is equal to cardinality of a by our above argument, right? a is in bijection with f of a. So, therefore, we get that and cardinality of b minus f of a. Now, you can argue, right? So, two numbers are comparable. Any two cardinal numbers are comparable. So, we are adding something to this side. So, therefore, cardinality of b is bigger equal cardinality of a. So, the main argument here is here. Yeah. I mean, this is an independent statement that if two sets are equinumerous, then their cardinalities are the same. And that is why we defined equinumerosity in the first place, right? So that their cardinalities are equal, okay? So uh, now let us come to the last problem. How do we show that two cardinal numbers are equal? What is true to the aleph naught? It is the cardinality of the cardinality of uh, power set or you can say the set of functions by definition it is the cardinality of the set of functions from any countable set any set with cardinality aleph naught to any set with cardinality 2 and what is this side? So, this is the cardinality of the set of functions from natural numbers to natural numbers. We have already shown that. Yes, so there is nothing to do here. Yeah, I just wanted you to understand how cardinality works. That is all. So, because these, un these underlying two sets are in bijection, they are equinumerous. So, therefore, the equality is true by the argument I gave. Okay. Now, finally, this one, this one is little bit more interesting aleph naught dot 2 to the aleph naught it is maximum because both of them are infinite it is maximum of them and by Cantor's theorem aleph naught is yes so this is uh, maximum of aleph naught and 2 to the aleph naught and maximum is of course 2 to the aleph naught by Cantor's theorem and we are done Similarly, over here, aleph naught square is maximum of aleph naught comma aleph naught and we are done, right? Please uh, have a look at that argument. So, aleph naught to, uh, to the uh, multiplied by 2 to the aleph naught, it can also be viewed as disjoint union of n n plus 1 where n belongs to omega. Right, because every interval, every non empty interval is in bijection with real numbers. So, therefore, this is in bijection with disjoint union of R taken omega many times, and this is its cardinality over here. Yeah, this is equal to aleph naught times 2 to the aleph naught, and this is simply. I mean sorry not equal to I should say equinumerous with 0 infinity which is equinumerous with R and its cardinality happens to be 2 to the aleph naught. Yeah, so there are other ways of showing the same result as well. Okay, let us stop here.